Say, I think we're live. Live? Yep, I beat them. Hey guys, um, so we don't even know how to join our own live, I guess. I think it's 3.59, we're a little bit early. Um, Perfect, so now we can interact with you guys. Um, so, we were a little late in our live. We're really sorry if uh, you can't hear us really well because it's raining, uh, we have a kid that's screaming inside, but this is real life, I guess. If you're there, can you let us know if you can hear us? Evelina, Juliet, Glory, Etile, can you guys hear us? Awesome. Sounds like you guys can hear us. All right, so there's 42 people in here. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah, for, awesome. yeah. yeah for just starting, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> um, so we wanted to kind of give you guys an update on like what's happening in our lives. Obviously, I chopped off all my hair, and some people wanted to know why I would chop off all my hair. To be honest, um, a couple of reasons. When we moved here, I lost a bunch of hair. I don't know if it was stress. I stopped nursing Noli. I don't know what caused it. I have quite thick hair normally but um, the ends were really thin and I was having all this new regrowth and so I just thought I'd chop it all off to even it out. But also, I actually have a lot of gray hair and I've been coloring it. My normal color is this color, but I'm trying to experiment like growing it out. So I have some purple going on. I don't know if you can see it. The purple's a dye, a direct dye instead of a permanent color. And the permanent color's been irritating my scalp. So probably way more information than you guys wanted. <laughs> but that's, that's one of the main reasons. I'm experimenting with figuring out my gray hair, trying to make it all thick again, and yeah. <laughs> and also, it gives us a little bit of opportunity to wait for those people that haven't been able to sign in at all. <laughs> Most especially the people in Texas. Um, my sister is in Texas, and I'm really, and my brother uh, and their families, and I'm really hoping that they can join in. Uh, my other sister in Utah, Baylin, and her family, hopefully they can join in also. Um, but here's here's some more updates. We we wrote a bunch of stuff down so we can be efficient with our time, and then we'll answer any kind of questions that you guys have. So um, we'll let you know when we get to the to the answer question. To the what is answer question? What? to the uh, answer period or whatever. Yeah. Thanks everyone for saying my hair looks nice and younger. I keep telling you, I'm like, I think people think I look younger because I look like a preteen boy, but <laughs> that's okay. Not to me, not to you guys. Just just up in this, in, 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 your, brain. in your brain. Um, okay, so first off, thank you so much for the growth of the channel. Today actually represents the, the year anniversary of our first upload to YouTube. Uh, we started filming back in J May or April of 2018, um, and we continue, and then we moved to Samoa in July 2018, and then we continued to film um, until November, and then in November is where we started posting that stuff back from April. Um, and so we're little, we're, we have kind of two diverging timelines because then we went to New Zealand uh, for Christmas. And when that happened, we wanted that to be kind of up to date and so that you guys could follow us as we were in New Zealand, kind of in real time. We were a few days behind, but basically in real time. So then that created a split in our timeline. Um, and so we actually are, uh, we still have footage from October of last year. So more, He's phone. My phone. Uh, more than a year ago, um, we still have footage from like more than a year ago. So we're gonna get through that stuff but also, you'll be able to tell now which one is an old one, which one is an old video because of Alicia's longer hair. I'll still have long hair and a lot of videos. <laughs> and it's then, not a weave. Yeah, no weave. <laughs> and then 
it, the short hair is obviously the current stuff. So, like for instance, the Halloween video that we published yesterday, we filmed that the day before yesterday, and we published it because it was it was um, time sensitive. Oh, good word. Time, two word. Time sensitive. And that's the way it'll be. Like anything that's like current events here in Samoa, it'll be like posted immediately. Or restaurant review, um, mukbang, or uh, resort review, those will all be within a few days after filming. Uh, but the regular vlogs will be kind of like almost like flashbacks, not really. But, um, so our goal at the end of 2018, when we first started YouTube, our goal was to get to 250 subscribers. Holy cow, my glasses are fogging up. Fogging. So we wanted 250 subscribers in our first two months on YouTube, and we did it with yeah, your guys' help. Yeah, you guys got us to almost 1,000. We were at like 990 or something like that, which would blow our minds. <laughs> but the goal was 250 at the end of um, 2018, 25,000 at the end of 2019, and then 250,000 at the end of 2020. So obviously massive lofty goals, but if you don't set those lofty goals, you're never going to reach it anyway. And it was a it was a big deal for us to get to almost a thousand subscribers in in a couple months, and it just blew our minds. We knew that the, that the last two months are the times when YouTube is really kind of ramping up, and YouTube the YouTube algorithm really pushes out a bunch of different videos, and and helps people to subscribe. And so we want you guys to help us to get to that twenty five thousand by sharing if you can. If there's a video that you guys like that your family might be interested in, maybe share it with them so that we can get uh, to that 25,000 subscriber mark. Also, make sure to tell your auntie and mom and dad or whoever who aren't super familiar with YouTube, let them know it's free to subscribe. We've actually had quite a few people be like, oh, I would love to subscribe, but I can't afford it. And we're like, oh, it's totally free. All you need is a Gmail account, and it shows you how to sign up for one if you don't have one. Um, and the Gmail account is totally free. And also other people here in Samoa have been like, oh, I'd love to subscribe, but I don't have enough data to be able to subscribe to you. Well, you don't need any data other than going on YouTube and hitting subscribe. Um, and then if you want to watch videos, that will take some data, of course. But, but subscribing by itself, very little data and totally free. Yeah, um, and then so the next update is actually that um, oh, sorry. And hit the bell oh, yeah. so you can get notifications when we do post videos. Because we try to be consistent, but we're just not always as organized as we would like to be. <laughs> sorry, my sister just messaged me and said, "How do you? How do I join the join the live thing? Uh, you go to our page and subscribe watch to it. Family TV." Yeah, just kidding. She subscribed. Um, <clears throat> oh, sorry. More questions. Can you talk about, what can you talk about? Okay, so I cut my hair actually in Texas. Uh, about a month ago, um, I flew to Texas and left Joe here. He watched all four girls for about three weeks. Three and a half. <laughs> and the reason I flew to Texas was kind of bittersweet. It was to sell our beautiful home in Texas. I don't know if you've seen some of our first videos where we show you our home, um, and yeah, it was it was very hard to make that decision to sell our home, but it worked out as well as it possibly could have for us. We had people renting our home; they actually ended up purchasing it from us, so it went quite smoothly. Um, but it was sad. But the reason we sold our home. So we mentioned before is we've been living off of our savings and our savings are getting really, really small, but we want to continue to do this. Um, we want to continue to share Samoa with the world and we want to continue to provide these experiences for our family. We, so, did, we just looked at like, we just looked at our long-term goals, like our five-year goal and our 10-year goal. Our five-year goal is to continue to be doing this, right? Um, uh, showing, showing you to, showing you guys uh, all of Samoa um, and maybe even some other islands as well. That's that's what we're hoping for. Um, and then beyond that, uh, when looking at our 10 year goal, we're like, yeah, we, we have some pretty big things in mind. And right now in that five year goal, this house um, and that, that investment doesn't really fit in with that five year goal. Um, so we needed to, we need to be more liquid so that we can move Move the, move the money around into areas that actually help us to get to that 
five year goal, and so that's why we decided to sell the house. Um, and There's a couple questions if that means we're going to stay in Samoa long term. Oh, okay. So I'm glad you guys asked that. We are staying in Samoa until at least the end of next year. Um, part of the reason why we wanted to sell the house uh, was because we're thinking something a little crazy. You're going to think we're a little crazy. No, it's really crazy. What we're, we're thinking about. Um, in the beginning of 2021, buying a sailboat and sailing to Tonga and Tokelau and Wallace and Fortuna and Niue, Islands. Cook Islands, like um, all of the South Pacific, we're thinking about sailing around to those to those islands to experience that as well, um, and to show the kids more of an opportunity in those places. Um, uh, it, it is really kind of crazy, crazy because the only sailing we know how to do is. From YouTube, like we don't know. I sailed a bit in college. I wouldn't even say that. She went on a boat twice. No, I had friends in the Navy who had a sailboat, and they would all get drunk, and I didn't drink. Me and another friend didn't drink, and we would always sail the boat back in together. He would tell me what to do, and I would do that. So I don't know autonomously how to sail a boat, but we can do it. We can learn. Uh oh. I think yeah, maybe. It's okay. Joe's phone's breathing. Sorry. Um, <laughs> the the internet in Samoa is very touch and go sometimes, especially with weather. Um, so just want to make sure that we're live. I don't know why it's not showing up on my phone anymore. But um, <clears throat> okay, so that gets us to um, oh, last year. This is the this is the next update. Last year we went to New Zealand. We surprised the girls. You guys saw that video. Um, we surprised the girls with a trip to New Zealand on Christmas morning, and it was like, it was the craziest thing ever, how it all came together. We had a lot of help, and, and we really appreciated it. Um, and then you guys watched those videos, cheered us on. Lots of people, lots of you guys from New Zealand were loving us being in, in, in New Zealand and, and helping us through our difficult times of sleeping in McDonald's and whatever. Um, but then this year, we planned on going to the Philippines. We had a, we had a trip planned to go to the Philippines for Christmas this year. And then we just decided to cancel that trip. Um, and the reason why we decided to cancel that trip. So we wanted to put that money that we were going to put into that trip to the Philippines, which would have been quite expensive. Um, but we wanted to put that money into the local economy. And we also want to try and find some families in need and help them have a bit better Christmas um, and just help our girls, you know, appreciate their surroundings here and appreciate helping others um, instead of just going away for a fun vacation. So even though we can still have fun, it'll still be like a fun vacation. We want to actually tour around Samoa more than we normally do because the girls are in school. Uh, so that's kind of our Because they'll have a break at that time. Yeah, that's their summer break. Um, and so we're going to be pumping we're going to be pumping thousands of dollars into Samoa, um, and we're going to be giving thousands of dollars away to families in need as we see them. Um, so hopefully that helps people out and have a great Christmas. Um, okay, another update. While Alicia was in Texas, I actually moved our family from our house up by Lima Way and moved us closer to town. The reason why I moved us closer to town was because um, we wanted to save a little bit more money, just like we were talking about our five-year plans. We wanted to save some money, so we saved 25% by switching to Geico, no, by coming down here to um, to a Pia area, and... Um, it was cheaper rent and yeah. less gas, petrol for driving around. Yeah, and so it, it allows us to be closer to the girls' schools as well, um, except for Noli, um, up in, she's still up in Tifapata, but we're trying to figure out some system for we that. We have one. a bus she can ride. Yeah. So, so you're going to see new surroundings as we film ourselves in our, in our new place and stuff. Um, so again, you'll be able to tell old videos, new videos by the house that we're in, even though this house actually looks similar to the old house, but you'll be able to tell. Um, and then, uh, <laughs> also. Uh, what was it? Were you here when I bought it? No. 
Yeah, so right after Alicia got home from, um, from Texas, we actually bought a new car. So now we have a new, new. A new old car. Uh, it's, it's, a 2000, it's a 2010 um, Silver Delica. Um, which, which is short for, or it's like two words pushed together, we found out, delivery car. Yay! It's a minivan. <laughs> Uh, and you guys know that we don't like minivans, but uh, anyway, it's a, it's a good car for us. Um, okay, so I think that's all the up. Yeah. Oh, one more update. The real reason, the real reason why we bought the second car was because the kingdom uh, got a new job. Actually, it's not a real job. Um, it's it's a new opportunity. So you know how. It's not a multi-level marketing scheme. No, worry. it isn't. But it is to help you guys out and to help your, us out here in yeah. Samoa. Your family here, yeah. it's amazing for them. So, you know how when you send money through Western Union or MoneyGram or, um, I don't know, some sort of currency exchange and how it's really expensive? Um, from the time that you, you know, if you send 100 tala uh, to Samoa, um, between the service fee, the... Um, the conversion rate, you know, between New Zealand dollars or Australian dollars or American dollars over to Tala, um, and then the fees for delivery, the fees for like taxi cabs and stuff. By the time that your family takes that that hundred Tala that you sent and gets groceries with it and takes it back to their house, they probably have somewhere around sixty Tala worth of groceries, maybe 65 Tala worth of groceries. And that's if someone else didn't pick up their money for them and spend it at bingo or get yeah. some cigarettes or... <laughs> I'm sure that you guys have run into that into that problem. And so I partnered with a guy here um, so that we could, we could kind of help the people of Samoa a little bit more. We started this company, it's called iBuyPacific.com. So you can check it out. It's it's in its early stages. So there's there are obviously some some bugs to it, but we we've been working really hard on it for the past several months. Um, it's I buy Pacific, like you're purchasing something. B U Y Pacific. Yeah. yeah, we'll put that in the description so that if you watch this later, you can see it. But it's I B U Y and then Pacific.com. Um, so check it out if you can. Uh, and, and what you'll find is that more of the money that you send is going to get to your family. Uh, we have some massively um, awesome stories of like of these people, like this this guy. When when we first started delivering food, the the, the grandpa couldn't even get out of bed when we were delivering food to him, um, and the family kept kept making orders. And then a couple months later, now he's sitting up in bed. And then a couple months later, now he's he's actually coming to the door. And so he's like watching the movie on the TV that was purchased for him through I Buy Pacific. Yeah, and so like. There's, there's these miracle stories about just getting people the right kind of food instead of just eating uh, maybe saimini all the time or, um, or just eating, you know, uh, mamoy all the time uh, because it's really cheap, but it's really fatty. And so, you know, helping we, them get proper nutrition is really affecting their lives even better. Yep. And so, and so that's what we're trying to do is we're trying to, um, we're trying to do that and that's part of the reason why we've kind of slowed down a little bit on these videos because I've been I've been working not quite full-time on that project but uh, been working a lot on that project many hours and late at night and stuff um, as you guys know Alicia does all the editing for our videos and for those of you that don't know Alicia does all the editing for our videos um, that's why she can turn our uh, my crazy footage um, which is kind of sometimes a little lacking into something that you guys enjoy so, um, so that's that's like the biggest update is iBuyPacific.com is live and, and and ready to help your family and it saves you guys money too. So there's some questions on here asking about Western Union and that people still use Western Union. Yeah, we know it sounds crazy in other countries. It's not really a thing, but if you have to send money to Samoa, you're sending money through Western Union or MoneyGram. Those are really the only options here. Um, and the fees are expensive. If you have to send money back for mealofas, if you have, um, you know, w one of the stories that helped our friend think of this business idea was actually a, a friend who lived in another island nation and his mom really needed a new refrigerator. And so he sent money back home for her to get a refrigerator, but he 
then started seeing pictures of his brothers. He lived there still wearing new watches and taking all these photos of things they were doing that he knew cost money. And then he came to visit and guess what? There was no new refrigerator. So this allows you to decide, you know, if your family has a need that those specific needs can be met um, without losing fees or having other people spend money in ways that are frivolous um, and not helpful to the family. But yeah, I know it sounds crazy, but between Samoa and Tonga alone, they bring in like a billion dollars through Western Union in a year. Crazy. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So now that we've gotten through all of our updates, let's answer some of your questions. Business idea is amazing. Oh, thanks. I appreciate it. Shout out to Alicia for all the edits by Josin1. Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, she does a really good job. We spend many, many, many late nights uh, working on these videos for you guys. Uh, yeah, there you go, Junior. That's what I'm talking about. Western Union. Yeah, someone spent 6000 last year themselves sending money through Western Union. So it's a real thing. So yes, um, PayPal, and, and I don't know if Venmo works here, but PayPal does work here. Um, you can get it into your account, but then it's, it's more, like, like I said, it's more conversion fees. So with iBuyPacific, you're just shopping online, uh, just like you would like in, in America on Amazon, or uh, I think in New Zealand at Countdown, or at the warehouse, you just shop online, and then we can deliver it for you. Yeah, so we are like Samoa's Amazon. Yeah. Samoa's on. Samoa's on. <laughs> and you order, we can deliver it, or they can come pick it up at a free, determined location. Um, yeah, really good. Um, your auntie's Palosami and Oka. Sorry we couldn't bring you my auntie's Palosami. She actually just messaged me like 15 minutes ago to let me know that there's no Tonai tomorrow. So I was like broken hearted. I almost sent you guys a message saying I'm sorry we can't do this right now because I'm in mourning for no Oka tomorrow, but we have obligations. So we push forward. In, in strength and power, so I need your support. <laughs> um, where are the girls? The girls are fighting inside the house, uh, watching Trolls and probably some other movie, but we turn on the air conditioning for them, so I think they're actually, they're not screaming anymore, so. Uh, I think so they're good. I think they're good. <laughs> um, okay, so, so the question was, what do we do for a living? Uh, number one, we live off of our savings. Um, number two, we are building iBuy Pacific so that we can help the people of Samoa and help you guys save money and we make a little bit of money off of that. Also, um, not yet, but uh, hope, the, the goal is to, is to do that at some point. Um, uh, we also, I make some money off, off of some contract work that I used to do when I was back in the States. I used to design, I still design um, medallions, silver and gold medallions. Uh, for this company back in the States and it's called ProvidentMetals.com uh, So check them out and see some of our some of my designs. I also design cell phone cases on Casetify um, There's a link below if you want to see some of those you can purchase them And um, if you ever want to buy glasses like ours, we can get um, we have an affiliate link with the company we buy our glasses from And so just for instance these glasses the the, the white ones and these. Alicia's black ones. These were like these were six ninety five, I think. And these were like fifteen bucks. Yeah. So and that's including the prescription. So if you know your prescription you can go to um, the link in the description below. Yeah. yeah you'll see that. What other questions do you have for us? Um, someone asked, okay, if we have seen or heard of the star mounds from around the seventeen hundreds or eighteen hundreds. Yes, we have. They're in Savai'i. But we haven't found anyone who actually knows how to take us there yet. So we are working on it. Kind of true. So actually, I just saw a YouTube video uh, maybe about a week ago um, from one of our friends, distant relatives, Dion Fonti, who's a professor here at NUS. And she said that they've actually found like hundreds of star mounds all across Upolu and Sabai. And they're starting, I think it's called the the forest trails or something like that. I'll have to go back and look at it, but yes, that's actually, so you can YouTube, uh, you can search on YouTube for Dion, 
D-I-O-N-E, Phono T, and you'll find some stuff about um, about those those mounds. I actually want to write a movie about them. Yeah. <laughs> so let's see what happens with that. Dream big, guys. Dream big. Uh, Juliet, uh, Minnesota, Samoa Tourism should pay us. Um, so we actually talk, yeah, that's, that's awesome. I love that idea. Um, so if somebody knows the CEO or the minister over there, that'd be awesome. But actually, so we talked to them a little bit and we haven't quite been able to get together on exactly what we want to do for them and what they want us to do. Uh, we haven't um, put those two ideas uh, in line and, and, and melded it together yet, but I'm sure that they'll reach out to us. More and more people are reaching out to us to do more and more things. Um, for Samoa, um, you guys can t tell like that that more people are recognizing us for the work that we're trying to do here in Samoa, and um, and it's it's awesome. It, it really is, you know. Um, the the restaurants really appreciate the work that we do. The resorts really appreciate the work that we do. Um, you know, <laughs> Ronnie from from Take Home Pay. Oh, by the way, have you guys seen Take Home Pay yet? Because oh, it's awesome. It. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, you guys. Definitely need to check out Take Home Pay. It went into Hawaii last week. I hope that you Hawaiians were able to go. Uh, sorry, you Samoans that live in Hawaii were able to go see it. Heck, make the Hawaiians go see it too. They need to see it. Um, but yeah, it, it's really cool that people are starting to recognize the work and are starting to promote the work, which is really cool because they are understanding that if they're able to promote the work that we do, um, then they're able to get more business themselves, which is what we all want. We all want more money to come into Samoa so, because that just lifts, that lifts everybody. You people are asking why there's not a super chat option. Uh, we don't know. Is that, uh, is that something that, that we can do? I don't even know what that means. Why? <laughs> I, there's not, there's buttons here, but. This is only the second time ever going live. Have have we met any Peace Corps? We met a few Peace Corps. The Peace Corps loves us. Um, Drew, I don't know if you guys know this guy, but his name is Drew um, and Bina. They are, I think they're operations officers here in Samoa for the Peace Corps. Uh, really, really cool people. And um, they love the channel. They're fans of the channel. I met some people at the only Mexican place that just opened up two weeks ago. Um, in Samoa, it's called El Churro Loco. So when you guys come to Samoa, if you guys want some some Mexican, you got this El Churro Loco place. Anyway, I met we met five Peace Corps people over there. Um, they're big fans of the channel. So and if you didn't know, Joe's dad was in the Peace Corps. Yeah, that's how he came to Polynesia in the first place. He was in the Peace Corps in Tonga and helped the gang over there with agriculture and such. And then made his way to Samoa, an American Samoa, where he met his son. <laughs> you have to sign up for YouTube Premium to have the Super Chat option. So is that something that we do? Shawa? <laughs> I love it. Shawa! <laughs> uh, so is that something that we do or something that you guys do? I don't know. Uh, so I guess we'll study that up for our next live YouTube. Um, Faye Jr., my real name is actually, oh wow, Fatawi Malamau. Wow, there you go, Fatawi Malamau. Any advice on what to prep before coming to Samoa, thinking about moving here from New Zealand for a year? Um, yeah, and learn the language. So that's actually been one of our biggest challenges. It was one of our main goals in moving to Samoa was to learn the language. But no one teaches someone here. Yeah, um, it's and <clears throat> okay. So if someone is your first language, uh, wait, no, back up. If English is your first language, you probably are going to need somebody whose first language is also English. We've taken classes from a couple people whose first language was someone, um, including trying to learn from my mom, and it's really difficult. And part of the reason is because. Um, Native Samoan speakers don't understand. I, I think Native Samoan speakers n don't understand your question of why you're asking it because your perspective is coming from an, an, uh, an English, an English perspective, an English mind. Like when you're thinking about uh, sentence structure, there you go. Things like that. And Samoan doesn't have 
verb tenses. I've studied a few languages and it's quite different from other languages. Um, but yeah, we've had a harder time finding teachers. We keep like finding people to try and teach us. So our Samoan has been suffering. The girls are learning some at school, except Zara, because they won't teach a beginning Samoan class at Kasenga. Don't know why. So if you know someone there who will make that happen, we'd appreciate that. <laughs> Hey, my sister joined, uh, Phelan Merrick, who's actually married to Kolo uh, Funaki. So thank you, Phelan, for coming. Uh, she says, what's the favorite thing to do in Samoa? Okay, so uh, my favorite thing to do in Samoa is, what is your favorite thing? Maybe you should say what your favorite thing to do in Samoa. I love, uh, anytime we go to the beach or to Pula, the ocean here is just amazing. It's so perfect temperature for me. I'm a Florida girl, which is just like Samoa weather, but more air conditioning. <laughs> but I get cold in like New Zealand water, is so cold. Um, Woo! Yeah, California water, too cold. But I love the warm water. Just sitting on the beach is amazing. I think Joe likes eating the most. <laughs> okay, so there's no doubt that there are so many restaurants here in Samoa that you guys don't know about or didn't know about. Um, but there's a lot more to do in Samoa than you can than than there used to be five years ago when we visited in 2013. There's I mean there's double or triple or quadruple the restaurants here, um, and there's actually a new park that's coming. Bruno, the the circus guy, he's doing a new park. It's called Fia Fia, and it's going to be it's a five million tala park. Uh, Ferris wheel and ride. Yeah, the Ferris wheel is a hundred feet tall or something like that. So taller than the government building. Um, pretty crazy. So there's a lot of stuff to do in Samoa. But actually my favorite thing to do is just to get to the beach. Um, I hate paying for, for it, but I understand the, the process and thought behind it. Supporting the, supporting the local families and stuff. I, I get it. Um, I just wish it was more standard, right? Like, I don't want to go there one day and it's 40 tala, and the next day it's 10 tala, the next day it's 30 tala. It's just like, I just wish that it would just be the same all the time um, and that they didn't charge you based on what you look like. You know, how white are you, how much. <laughs> yeah. I get charged more than him all the time, and he gets charged more than our local friends. <laughs> yeah. Um, Vivian Mika said she's coming in a couple weeks, asked if we can recommend car rentals. Message us separately on yeah. Instagram we'll or take Facebook, there. and we'll send you some information. And she also asked if we have any concerns on the current measles outbreak. Um, we're trying to be cautious. They actually closed the, all the preschools on the island, so Noli hasn't been going to school. Um, unfortunately, my girls and I all carry a gene mutation that we can't process the heavy metals that are in immunizations and get really ill from them. So. They aren't immunized, um, so we just try and be cautious. But measles is a virus that runs its course, and if you can provide good nutrition and take care of it, you usually do okay getting through measles. So, um, yeah, just try and be careful. Um, so, he is Yesu asks, uh, Joe, where's your dad? Good question. Um, so, <clears throat> first off, my mom, she's back in Utah. Um, I'm sorry, she's back in the States, in Utah right now, um, helping my sister who just had a baby, um, and getting to see her brothers and sisters, most of her brothers and sisters live in Utah, so she's spending some time over there. Uh, my mom and dad uh, were married for 41 years, and um, they celebrated their 41st anniversary in 2016, and then in November 2016, and then like, uh, a couple weeks later, my dad passed away December 1st, which is actually Noli's birthday. Noli was born three hours after my dad passed away, so that was a really rough day and a really awesome day, all wrapped up into one. Um, but um, really, really special um, opportunity, I guess, for Noli to be able to have some time with her grandpa before she was born. She was actually like a week late, and we really feel like um, she knew that Grandpa was coming back to see her and uh, to spend some time with her before she came down here to be with us and to, to join our family. So, um, you know, I don't know. When, when you lose a parent, it's really difficult. Or you lose a close relative, it's really difficult. And so, like, it's still really raw for me, even though it's been, like, almost three years. Um, but 
but my dad would, there's no place in the world that my dad would rather have me be uh, than to be here in Samoa and teaching his grandchildren about Samoa. Uh, he wanted to be here. He, he actually came here for a couple missions um, and, uh, and was able to serve the people of Samoa through that and serve in the Peace Corps down here. And, uh, that was, I'm just trying to, you know, kind of live up to the legacy that he started. <clears throat> He was Halangi on the outside, but Samoan on the inside. Um, Faye Jr. asked, what villages are you from and where does your last name come from? Villages. My mom is from, um, my mom is, is the Samoan one. My dad's the Falangi one. My mom is from Vimoso. Um, and Safali'i. Um, she is a Fitzmanu. Um, her grandpa was Malitoa Fitzmanu. And, um, <clears throat> and what was the other part of that question? Was that it? What was the last name? Uh, yeah. Fitzmanu is our last name. Uh, is our Samoan last name. Uh, and, and then um, on my grandma's side, sorry, my grandpa's side is Fitzmanu, my grandma's side is by two. So I know that we have a lot of Bayou Twos um, here in Samoa um, and abroad also. So we are related somehow. And then my grandpa Malietoa, my, sorry, my great grandpa Malietoa Fitzmaun was married to Elisa Crichton. So there's a ton of Crichtons out there. We're related to you guys as well. Um, it's a nice suggestion. Shawa says you should do a collage of your families and show old pictures of how you met and got married. That would be fun to do sometime. Mm -hmm. We met at BOU Hawaii long time ago. She was a hottie. <laughs> Still is a hottie. Hey. <laughs> um, have your children adapted well to Samoan lifestyle? Yeah, I think they have adapted really well to the Samoan lifestyle. Um, do you guys, if you guys are watching on Instagram, or sorry, if you've been to our Instagram, you know that Ammo was doing a big performance yesterday. Uh, we try and keep our Instagram updated except for the past like four weeks because Alicia was gone and we were moving and we were selling a house, you know, all those things that we were trying to get done. We were, start, we were getting I Buy Pacific rolling. So like all these things that we've been trying to get done, we just that's been taking away our time from YouTube to be able to share more videos with you guys. Uh, but we got a plan to get us kind of back on track with that. Um, and if you don't follow us on Instagram, you should. That's where we typically post current things as they're happening. And you should go watch our stories on there right now that you can see Ammo singing at, at Samoa Primary yesterday and she did amazing. So cute to hear her sing in Samoa, our little tiny Samoa. Um, we were both born in the church actually. My dad joined the church so that he could marry my mom. My mom's like, my grandpa was not very nice to my dad when they were um, seeing each other, I guess. They weren't even really dating. My, my grandpa wouldn't let it happen because my dad was a hippie with uh, a massive beard and uh, was, drinking, hippie. It was drinking beers and you know and smoking. Ah, I don't know about smoking. I know he was Bacalolo. smoking, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, anyway, so uh, then after that, my mom's like, hey, if we want to date, we're going to have to get married. And my dad's like, what? So okay. then they got married and then, um, it, sorry, my dad joined the church like really quick. He joined the church, they got married. Um, my dad kind of fell away from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints uh, for a little bit. And then my brother James, I talked about him in our last YouTube Live, which was um, a few months ago. But my brother James, um, he was he was born and stillborn. Um, he was alive until like basically the last second. And then we, mom went to the hospital to bring home a baby and then came home without a baby. And, uh, and then that helped my dad to kind of think about like, about eternity and stuff, and about what's happening, and about uh, where, where, what happens after this life, and then the, he found those answers um, in praying and learning more about um, eternal families through the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and that, and that all families um, can be eternal families. Families are forever. Um, so yeah, that's that's my dad's like church story, and so I was born. Um, into the church like that, and Alicia's parents were also converts before she was born. Mm -hmm. um, yes, Minority Reporter, 
Um, the big island of Samoa, um, Sabai, there's a lot of land over there that's for sale. There's tons of land that's here for sale. I'm telling you guys, if you guys are, if you're a professional, um, or if you have a business or something like that, and you're thinking, man, I, I, sometime I want to come back to Samoa. Now is the time to come back to Samoa. There's so many different opportunities. There's so many things that people would ask me to do. Um, there's so many like uh, filming and editing projects that they've asked us to take care of, and we just don't have time for it because we're trying to build the YouTube channel for you guys um, and, and for us and, so, and, and for the kids. And so we don't have any time for that. There's been other opportunities where people have asked us to do um, other different jobs and, and things like that. But um, anyway, there's lots of opportunities for you to come to Samoa right now and to make money. Now, if, that said, if you don't have very many, like if you don't have any business experience or you don't have a business right now or something like that, coming to Samoa is really hard. If you, for instance, work in a factory, we basically have one factory here that and they make mattresses and those workers make somewhere between two tala and maybe seven tala and and even if you make ten tala ten tala is only three dollars and seventy five cents us so that is not enough for you to live on so come here start a thai restaurant yes please because that's what we need we don't have a thai restaurant and we need somebody who knows how to make thai food over here um, uh, three acre lots on the Big Island of Hawaii running 15,000? Okay, so I wasn't, I didn't know you were talking about Big Island of Hawaii. I don't know anything about that. Um, <laughs> yeah, then you have to hear us wander through live videos. <laughs> yeah, good, good point. Um, Emanuela Viner, thank you so much. We really appreciate the love. Um, I, I wanted to, to, to say something to um, Darasina Afu. I hope I said your name right, and maybe that's not even your real name. But um, So if you guys go through our videos and see the comments, you'll see that Darasina, I think she found our channel like maybe this week or last week, and she's watched like, I don't know. 80 of our videos or something like that. So thank you, Darcina. Uh, Speaking of 80 videos, this is our 99th. Yeah, this is our 99th episode. Obviously, there's resort reviews, mukbangs, restaurant <laughs> reviews, you know, those are separate. But this is our 99th episode on our one year anniversary of doing um, of doing YouTube. Pretty cool. So, so our 100th video, we decided we're going to do a little highlight video of things we love with our time here in Samoa. And, um, but I'm still finding all of the footage from various hard drives, so it might be a minute. <laughs> but that leads to someone, where did it go? Um, someone asks, oh, if we miss anything about living in Texas, Adrian Tufe asked if we miss anything about living in Texas. And yes, it was weird to be back in America. Like, I walked into Target and I was like, oh, I can't even just casually walk around and try and shop. I want to put everything in the cart. <laughs> I need to just make a list of what I need because there was just so much stuff and it looked so nice and clean and pretty. And <laughs> Even when we went to New Zealand last year, you know, it was, we'd been here for five months at that time. We went to New Zealand, we walked into Countdown. For those of you that are from New Zealand and understand like how big a Countdown is, or for those even more impressive, from America that have seen Walmart Superstore um, and have also seen the um, the countdown. When we walked into Countdown, we were like, oh, oh yeah, oh, oh, my God. God. it was pretty crazy. It was really overwhelming because we don't have, for those of you that have never been to Samoa, we have nothing like that no. here. We, so we do miss the convenience of shopping. Like we honestly did all of our shopping online when we lived in America. I would place our grocery order online, go drive to the store, pick it up, Amazon deliveries for everything else we needed. So we rarely set foot in a store and it just saves so much time. Here we'll go to five stores looking for one ingredient and still not always find what we need or want here. But Faye Jr., um, can you explain a little bit more? You said, what do you think people with lots of money should do to help the community in Samoa? Are you talking about people here with lots of money? Or are you talking about people in Australia, New Zealand, and America with lots of money? Um, because those are two different things. 
um, in what in what you can actually do with the money. Right. So if you if have you, money and you live here or want to live here, starting businesses and creating jobs, um, stimulating the economy that way is one of the best things that you can do. Yeah, there's there is an appetite for that, right? Like. I think when people were, you know, a few years ago, 2013, I think people were like maybe a little nervous to start new businesses because they didn't know if the if the economy could support that. But there's more and more and more tourists that are coming here, not just tourists, but like expats like us who are coming here and moving here and staying here and they have money to spend on things. They just don't they just don't have the things to spend it on, right? Like the things that we spend our money on are food. Obviously, we spend a lot of money on food. We spend a lot of money on gas. Um, and then we spend a lot of money going to like beaches and, and tourist attractions and stuff. Um, so, so you you can you can start a business and uh, and use your money for that purpose to help to help people locally. Now, you know one thing one question it's not here, but people talk about it all the time is like raising the minimum wage uh, from two I think it's two fifty tala uh, per hour, which is like a dollar a little less than a dollar U.S. Um, and, and unfortunately, that's not a wise thing to do right now. And the reason is because we have a massive supply of unskilled workers and we have very few jobs. So, you, so forcing a business to pay more um, for unskilled labor uh, doesn't really help doesn't really help right now. We need, we need more people to start more businesses so that we have less of a problem with less of a glut in the workforce availability and we have more people spending more money <clears throat> um, okay and then if you're abroad and you want to help people in Samoa good job Faith come join iBuyPacific.com and send people some <laughs> send people some groceries for schools we have a GoFundMe still up for the Montessori school schools are very underfunded here can always use supplies <laughs> It's, it's actually not flies. It's it's freaking mosquitoes. The, the mosquitoes right now. I wish I knew how to, to do the slap dance because they are going crazy on us right now. Minority Reporter, hello. Um, do they have solar company on the island? There, there is a solar company. I don't know the name of it or who's in charge, but there are a couple of solar fields here. Um, but increasing solar, bringing a solar company here, obviously is a wise thing because there's a lot of sunshine and so if you have that skill you have you know an understanding of that business already i think you could do something with that here is it so yeah i think so okay so um Soul's yeah <laughs> soul soul zeal how much can you lift bro uh like a hundred pounds uh not not as much as i should be able to lift um, but he can pick up like refrigerators and he's very utilitarian strength not just pretty muscles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he also asked, any more kids on the way, bro? Not out of my body, I hope, but we've talked about maybe adopting a Samoan boy sometime. We don't know. Whatever the Lord tells us. <laughs> then that's what we'll do. Um, <clears throat> but unlikely, because we're 63 years old, <laughs> and so we shouldn't be having kids anymore. <clears throat> Yeah, light a mosquito coil. <laughs> uh, Margaret, hi Margaret. Thank you so much for all of your love and all of your comments. Uh, uh, Margaret Matafeo, uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, what would the schools be lacking? Schools are lacking anything. So they're lacking books. Like the books that my kids bring home, that our kids bring home from, from school. They're from like 1942. Yeah, not literally, but literally from 1960 to 1975. They're literally 40 to 50 year old books. So if you can send books over here, I mean, books are expensive to bring over here. So, you know, any any old books that you have, any kind of textbooks, um, and if you guys have like magazines that are in good shape or kids books that are in good shape, um, if you're coming over and you need to bring a bunch of stuff back to, back to wherever you're from, um, bring a bunch of books. And if you guys want to meet up with us, we will meet up with you guys so that we can distribute those books. Um, we but can school probably supplies, even add a section on I buy Pacific potentially in the future for school supplies. Yeah, yeah, we actually do have some school supplies up there. Um, but yeah, they school like, supplies are huge. They, here. The Montessori school anyway said they use a lot of paints for the little kids, but they actually buy powdered paint that they mix with water. 
because um, it lasts longer. So I don't know, I've never even heard of powder paint before, but that's what they use. And crayons, um, pencils, they're always anything. They would take anything. The public library. Good idea. Uh, we will check that out and we will put that blog we'll put that blog in the schedule. Let me get the schedule. Um, Am I natural? I mean, yeah. I mean soul zeal, I, I really appreciate uh, the questions. You're making me like feel like I'm like massive and really jacked. I've been I've been working out for the last couple uh, four weeks I've been on this thing. Um, where I, I'm intermittent fasting, I'm only eating between like 5 p.m. and 9 p.m. or 4 p.m. and 8 p.m. Um, the other 20 hours I'm not eating and I'm trying to stick to like 1800 calories. Um, I haven't, that's one reason why I haven't done a mukbang in so long. Uh, but when it comes time to do a mukbang, I will be throwing down and throw the diet out the window and I'm going for like a 5,000 or 6,000 cal calorie meal. <coughs> Vivian Nico um, asked, what are 10 must-have items a tour should pack? That is a good question. We'll have to do a video dedicated to something like that, but I would definitely recommend water shoes if you plan on going to beaches or places because there's so much coral or lava rocks, and if you don't have local Samoan feet, you're gonna want some water shoes. Um, if you have fair skin, it's hard to get sunscreen here. Um, uh, the kind that, that you maybe want. We do have we do have sunscreen here, um, 50, 60 SPF or something like that. Um, but it's some of it is pretty close to expired. Uh, we we don't have like a, the greatest selection of it. We'll make a we'll try to make a more comprehensive video on that. Um, so we haven't checked out the Samoa Fia Fia Park at Tule. Again, Etele is also a big fan, um, always giving us love in all of our videos. Thank you. Um, and multi policy, I saw a question from you. Um, but Fia Fia Park hasn't opened yet. It's coming soon. We're still, but when it opens, we will be there. We promise you. Um, Pololo. Yes, there is Pololo. And I actually tried it for the first time. I'll, I'll put that up on Instagram tonight. Um, I'll, put that, I'll put those stories up on Instagram tonight. So check Instagram uh, tonight or tomorrow, I guess. For you guys that are in America tomorrow, um, so that you can see the, our experience with Palolo. Um, Lorena Hunt asked if we would ever visit the prison. Maybe they just built a new prison. Um, it's supposedly actually really nice. It kind of makes me nervous that people might want to get into the prison. <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it depends. We we would consider going there, um, Alicia and I, or maybe just me if there was like some specific purpose in uh, showing you guys more about the prison. Um, but I, I don't know, I don't, I don't think that they would do that really. I don't think that the government would allow that. I don't think we would wanna bring the girls. <laughs> yeah, multi-policy asks, is there any form of funding from the government for education? Yes, there is funding for education here, but um, I, don't, I don't, I need to look into, maybe I don't need to look into it, but if I were to look into it, I would find that not very much money goes into funding public education here. Um, most most expats put their kids in private schools, including us. Samoa Primary in Bailele is a private school um, that we pay for. It's 700 tala per term, which there's four, so it's almost 3,000 tala per kid. So that translates into 1,200 US dollars per year. Um, whereas the public schools, they're free, um, but it seems like the public schools are more geared to get you through maybe like um, eighth grade in the United States, which is year nine in Australia, New Zealand. Um, and, and then after that, they kind of lose track of you after that. And, and it just, it doesn't seem like it's that great of an education, um, unfortunately. So hopefully, and, and you can tell by our private school, which we pay a thousand US dollars to, more than a thousand US dollars to every year for each kid, has books from the 1970s. I mean, like, there are no new books in this place. So um, thank you, Margaret, for, for helping with uh, shipping shipping books over here to Samoa. Huge help. Hi, Roger, says hi, hi. Is it Tumatule Alofa? Sorry. I don't know if there needs to be an apostrophe or not there. <laughs> Hello from Manuka. 
Um, Sarah, we're so sorry about your mom passing and we wish she could be with you also. Oh, yes, Sarah, I owe you a message. I, I, I saw your message on Instagram and it, it really did make us really sad. We know that your mom really enjoyed the vlog and you guys messaged us so many times about how much it helped you and your mom, um, you know, seeing the stuff in Samoa that's here right now. So I owe you a message and I didn't forget and I will message you um, soon, very soon. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there was another message here that I wanted to... Oh, uh, Manua and Apolima. We, we, we actually haven't been to Manua or Apolima yet, um, but we're going to go uh, in December. Once the kids are out of school, that's one of the things that we're gonna take them to go do, is go enjoy that. So we'll have a vlog for you guys um, about that soon, hopefully. Um, I'm not sure where it's gonna be in the timeline, but yes, we're definitely going to Manua and Apolima um, very soon. And, and, uh, uh, and, oh, and also Monono. We haven't been to Monono either, so we're gonna go there for a day trip and then come back we may or may not spend the night in Monono, but then we gotta figure out a way to get to Apolima. But then yes, we're gonna head over to Manua and go to Oku Beach. We haven't spent, oh my goodness, this thing's killing me. Uh, we haven't spent very much time in American Samoa, but um, we're gonna go back to American Samoa, um, hopefully during this December, January um, time off of school. Alessana asked about the cell service, Wi-Fi service here. Um, we actually recently switched to Digicel and we've been really, really happy with the switch. Yes, so make sure when you guys come to Samoa, make sure you sign up, not sign up, it's not sign up. You just you just stop by and you get a Digicel SIM. And, and, um, there's there's two places here, one's Blue Sky, one's Digicel. Um, get, a, get a Digicel SIM. If you're gonna be in town area, it's the, it's the best SIM for being in town. Um, the plans are, uh, a little bit cheaper and they're much more straightforward. So they you roll understand. over your data, yep. which is really nice here. Yep. Uh -huh. We should probably wrap it up. Yep. Oh boy, too long. Sorry. Uh, we appreciate you guys. Uh, do they have trade schools? Uh, sorry, Minority Reporter asked if they have trade schools. Uh, they... There is one by NUS. Yeah. But I don't know exactly what they. I think they might have welding. Yeah, if, if you're a mechanic, you can make some serious bank here in Samoa because the mechanics in Samoa, um, gotta be careful about what I say, but the mechanics in Samoa, are, uh, we haven't we haven't found a mechanic who's like really, really, really awesome. One guy, the guy that we've been going to lately, uh, the last two times actually, he's done a really good job for us. His name is Pony and he's right downtown. Uh, sorry, not downtown. He's right on by Taylor Road and oh shoot, the road that goes to the clock tower by Allen, um, by Allen's supermarket. Um, Pone is really good. The other guy that we really like, his name is JP, um, and he works at Auto Saver with his dad Klaus. You guys might know that guy. Um, Auto Saver has been a, they actually helped us when basically no one else could help us with the with the black van. Um, so those two guys have been awesome. But if you have skills, mechanic skills and you're certified don't not just that you're like a bush mechanic and you are really good like that's not good enough be, be a certified mechanic come over here and start a mechanic shop and you'll make some money and make it a priority to like have a good supply for parts it's really hard to get parts here in a timely manner and an affordable manner all right i think um it's it's been an hour and so we really appreciate your time uh, we don't want to hold you guys up any longer. Hopefully you guys had uh, fun because we did have a lot of fun as well. Um, and we'll continue to bring more videos to you guys. Uh, the next video, episode number 100, will be live on Monday. Yeah, I thought that's right. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a little bit. Hopefully we can get that up to you guys next week, and then after that, then we have some stuff lined up after that. So that'll be uh, more videos will be coming in a, um, in a faster fashion, yeah. right? I think so. More I'm videos. working on it. <laughs> but we are going in the summer here, and it's hot, but it makes it harder to work. 
a lot. <laughs> um, sorry, one last question from Benja Samu. Can I use my personal phone from the U.S. in Samoa? Yes, as long as it's unlocked from, it, you know, like I had, we had AT&T, so if AT&T will unlock the phone, especially iPhone. I don't know anything about Android because Android sucks. Uh, but, uh, but seriously, uh, you can use your phone as long as it's unlocked from T-Mobile, unlocked from AT&T, unlocked from Sprint. Um, uh, actually, I don't know about Sprint and Verizon. I don't think you can from Sprint and Verizon because they don't use SIM cards. I don't think, you know, anyway. Uh, AT&T works 100%, so if you have AT&T, you're good. Okay, sorry guys. I don't know how to stop this thing. Live. Stop.